Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Welcome to the Double Game Week 29 pod of the FPL Wire. I just want to read out now Arsenal's fixtures over the next six weeks. And obviously, 29 and 32 are the main ones. But 30, they play Liverpool away, 31 West Ham away, 33 City, 34 Chelsea, 35 Newcastle. In fact, if you look at the scout ticker over the, I think, top till game week 34, they are second bottom. So, Baka, what are your thoughts on Arsenal players in defence in attack? They're a risky sell this week. Um, I mean, there are no two ways about it. Uh, you look at Leeds and how they'll be without Tyler Adams. Uh, Max Whopper is it out as well, who's been one of their better defenders this, this season. And in games that... Uh, that Adams has missed um, this season, they've conceded a high number, amount of XG uh, across those fixtures. So there's risk to it. I am going to do it for my own team. I have uh, Zinchenko, Odegaard, and Saka, and I'm looking to move uh, two of them at least this week, despite uh, knowing the risks. It's simply because when you have a free hit in 32 in, in, in mind. I, I tweeted this earlier as well. I, I sort of keep asking myself three questions as to when I'm comparing, let's say, Bruno with um, Saka, right? Or Odegaard or Martinelli. I, I keep asking myself, who would I rather have this week? It's, it's got to be the double game weaker. And the second question is, who do I want after game week 29? It's again, the double game weaker. I, I don't really mind selling Saka because I, I've, I've looked at the stats between Saka and Odegaard. I know you were a huge fan of Saka's off, but over the last six fixtures, Odegaard actually has a better um, non pen XGI and his numbers are more or less at par with Saka. I mean, I know Saka is a better pick because of penalties and higher expected minutes, but if someone is in this position where you sort of need to sell one to Ford Bruno and then go from Tony to Haaland next week, I would just sell um, the one which is affordable. Pranil, what are your thoughts on the Haaland demand? Keeping in mind, it is the early kickoff. So I think we will have certain news on Saturday. And if he is in or out, I want you to give me your thoughts on both scenarios. What do you think that changes your outlook going forward? You know, in terms of committing transfers so that you're priced out of a Tony to Haaland next week is what the dilemma that you guys have uh, at the moment. I think you just cross that bridge when you get there and focus on maximizing your transfers right now because of the lack of information that we have. If Haaland is playing, then you make sure you're planning for Haaland in next week. If he isn't playing and it's all dicey information, make your best move this week and then you know find a place to uh, take a hit and find cash next week for Haaland, I think. That's what you do. Haaland being a doubt, I'm looking at selling... Odegaard or maybe Saka for I'm looking at bringing Bruno and Salah possibly this week and we have some data on Liverpool we'll talk about a bit more I think there is potential upside there because Haaland being ruled out this weekend I think opens up a whole plethora of possibilities with all this money we've got sitting in there yeah I think it's fine uh, as long as you're making a bet to play the variance card trying to get lucky with the extra fixture and it helps that United and Liverpool assets are assets that you're going to want to hold until the end of the season. It helps that the fall-off fixtures, not for Liverpool, but for United after 29, are great. Uh, Liverpool, you just have to wait for one week more. And again, there's a great run of fixtures onwards. So it's completely fine to make those moves in my opinion. It's just that Arsenal will still hurt you. You shouldn't ignore that. You should be that. prepared for that. That is definitely happening. Yeah, exactly. And, and just a yeah. quick note on the Arsenal defence. I've got some numbers up here. Now, this is since the restart. Arsenal's defence has been a bit more leaky. The eighth, I think, eighth bottom for shots on target conceded. And I think Saliba is still going to be out for a bit. Pen. And I'm just thinking budget defenders. You'd probably go with somebody from like your... Forest have a good double. Maybe go for Forest. But whoever you buy would be quite short term. There's nobody I exactly. particularly think of. Maybe somebody from Liverpool. I think Konate. I think maybe mm. might. How, I don't even know what his price is. West Ham. Yeah, West Zuma Ham. is the one that comes to my mind. Yeah, because... I was going to say West Ham. Yeah. Good fixtures this week. And overall, their defensive numbers this season haven't been bad. I think they're fifth or sixth for HGC. Yeah. If you're also somebody who doesn't own a Newcastle defender, a second Newcastle defender, you can probably go there because you're going to hold that until 36 for the double there. And Newcastle are a good defensive team. So I think if you're looking for a budget defender, I'd go Newcastle or West Ham. If he was fit and if maybe Ericsson wasn't playing, like the one I'd maybe consider as a punt, as a low budget asset is Sabitzer. Like he makes some really smart runs inside the box, etc. as well. But it's just a no-go at the moment. Like, I mean... 
i am i'm i'm chasing rank right now and you know uh, i might get creative and pick another asset based on what uh, uh, 10x says on friday but bruno is the pick there's nobody else bruno rashford show sure. these are the picks there's no one else it's obvious bruno where, where do you think bruno will play do you think he's going to play advanced he's going to be playing where he's played all season which is an advanced eight now for shots in the box in away matches they're actually first big chances second xg second np xg third numbers underlying numbers are very good but what's been happening is the finishing the delta for finishing away from home is minus 8 that is they expected to score at least 8 goals more they scored 13 expected to score 21 and it's completely is plus 7 at home is something that's quite strange you can say they're more confident at home and etc but could we expect some regression here or do we expect this to continue that's the bet we have to make right and let's look at sala's number as well this is sala away from home shots in the box also 44 his xgi per minutes per xgi is 166.7 last year it was something like 99.5 his xgi was 272 per minutes per xg and last year it was 132 so there has been a drop off in sala's numbers as well away from home so i'm very conflicted reading those numbers i don't know what to make of it now especially yeah. now that liverpool have such a laser focus on fourth spot bucker what's your outlook on liverpool um i think the more pertinent stats to talk about here are sala's away stats personally because his non pen xg away from home this season is really poor and there's a significant drop off it's actually 0.27 per 90 which isn't that good at all when you compare this to his home uh xg this season that's 0.67 so 0.67 versus 0.27 is a huge drop off similarly when you look at his non pen xg uh away from at last season that was 0.57 so it's very clear that he's not getting as many goal scoring opportunities as he used to or as as much as he's getting at home and similarly you mentioned liverpool's uh, under performance away from home this season the thing is that most of those big chances have been falling to darwin nunes who's been missing them and not to sasha okay. so i think when you're looking at when you're looking at liverpool i personally think that we can afford to overlook them this week especially if we're uh, free hitting in 32 a because of the fact that four of the next five fixtures when you ignore game week 32 are away including two against city and chelsea this week who are among the top five home defenses this season which is why i believe that sala ceiling isn't as high as as it would normally be in a home fixture the other point is that i don't think it is worth a cane downgrade just before he plays uh, these three fixtures especially the one in game week 31 at home to bournemouth is the one which screams all to me now brighton let's spend some time with brighton over here now brentford concede a lot of chances down the center which is again good for like a ferguson possibly mcallister but bournemouth lot of weaknesses down both flanks so your mitoma and march could profit there all three of their midfielders i think are in with a captaincy shout this week yep for sure anything to add bucker on the brighton mids your ranking is what still now mcallister march mitoma or possibly second third yeah, person yeah i i can't pick, I, I, i can't pick between march and mitoma but i think mcallister is the best this oh, alas like, i tell people to whoever is listening to us if you're going for a brighton midfielder just go with your vibes genuinely <laughs> like like it's a roll of the dice just go with your vibes whatever you're feeling there's nothing wrong in terms of picking midfielder a versus b versus c go with who you feel is the right pick i'm much more confident that mitoma will beat the defender in front of him and then curl one in compared to mcallister getting one at his feet at the edge of the box and then not being able to finish that chance like that's the thing with the numbers and mcallister where i am at the moment fair but i mean penalties yeah. penalties swing the yeah, yeah. i agree i agree i'm just saying go with vibes like i don't that's 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 the reason they all I three have well. plus and minuses to them really yeah. and it's all yeah. ultimately in a space of one or two games i think of the long run it's all similar so one or yeah. two games is always a coin toss and variance really but like we discussed the matchups aren't that favorable for united i think it's a good week to go against united for a differential captain because rashford i think he'll be what 130 140 I think you can't take that on this week. I think it's higher so. I think it's higher. Yeah, because United fans a lot. But still, uh, you know, just wanted to mention the last 2-3 games Rashford hasn't looked like he did in that 
run that he went on. But again, you know, we are post international break, like a little bit of form table goes out of the book, so you don't know what to predict. Yeah. Absolutely strange going to such a big week, such a major week in the FPL season as such after international because, like you said, there will be a little bit of sharpness lacking, a little bit of cohesion. Yeah, like there's one team we need to talk about when it comes to captaincy options, and that's Leicester. Uh, like I think James I Madison is. The numbers here, is, I, think I forgot to put that, up the numbers. That's fine, but the problem is Palace now are playing with. Uh, Roy the toy. And that's the problem because Leicester are going to be playing against a 10 Mac pass. Plus, plus, I think Villa is a great attacking fixture. I see goals. I think Leicester, Aston Villa could see 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 2. Either way, I see goals in that game. I think Madison is a perfectly good captaincy option. Like, yeah, if I, don't, think- I, I don't mind Madison either. Uh, Villa, a 20th perfect chance to concede it post uh, restart. And Palace actually are much worse at home as a post away. And they can see plenty of big chances at home. Everything that you know about Palace, though, goes out of the table with Roy coming in. Right? Yeah, that's right. But again, generally, Leicester are better away as well. So that's like a good matchup yeah. for Madison. Exactly. Like, and if somebody wants to punt on Barnes also, like, it's very interesting because uh, I was watching uh, Brendan Rogers' post match interview and he spoke about Barnes and he spoke about how he has the ability to beat the player, make these runs. But he said, now, he's evolved into a role where his primary responsibility is of a goal scorer. This is my team first up. Kepa in goal, Trippier, Botman, Chilwell, Estupinan, Mitoma, Rashford, Cap, March, Odegaard, Watkins, Tony. On the bench, Rhea, Saka, Kane and Henry. Odegaard to Bruno is something I'm definitely doing. And the Haaland news would really depend where I go. I don't think I'm going to be doing Henry to Shaw for a hit, but Saka to Salah might still happen. Ooh, like that's off. That's go for more easier, boy. Very tempted. Bakar, this is yeah. your team. I think you've got Zinchenko instead of Henry. It's pretty much else the same. Yep. What are your plans? I'm looking at moving Zinchenko on for Shaw and... Let's say if Alan looks like he'll be available this week or fine by, by some point next week, I'm, I'm going to sell Saka for Bruno so that I can afford Tony to Alan next week. Fair enough. Captain Rashford. Pranil, you've got your team up. You've got the image up in front of you. I think yours is also yes, pretty yes. similar. You've got, I think, Madison in place of one of Saka and McAllister for one of the Brighton mids. Havertz up top. Martinelli in yep. midfield. Yeah, I don't know what I want to do. I mean, I could very easily bench boost without making a move. Uh, but I might move maybe uh, Zinchenko for sure. Uh, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with uh, Martinelli. My, whether I want to move him to Bruno, get creative with Barnes, get a cheaper United midfielder because I'm chasing rank, right? So I might take a few risks. I don't know yet. Yeah. I, don't and I'm monitoring the- I don't see you captaining Rashford. This week. Yeah, my, my bus team captain is Solomon of Sir Solomon March and I don't mind it. I like that. Yeah. And should mention all three of us are currently on bench boost this week, and I think we are going to stick to it. I think even if there is one or two injuries, Botman is pictured back in training. Besides despite being yellow flagged, I think we expect Rashford to play. So I don't think there are much injury issues as such. I think we are going to be sticking to our bench boost strategy. 